Hello and welcome back to my series regarding these fantastic Max 7219 LED matrices. In this video, we're going to slightly update the basic clock which we did in the last video. Well, I say a little bit of updating, quite a lot actually. We're going to add the seconds, we're going to add auto dimming, and we're going to add custom fonts so we can make it look pretty. So let's crack on with the code. So the code is again based around this website and the guy is Dave and I've just edited his code to make the matrices work and make it work how I want it. So I'm going to go through some of this code pretty quick. Uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, see the first video. So we're going to connect to Wi-Fi. You need to enter your Wi-Fi credentials into this file, which will appear up here into my config and that will get you on the... Um, the internet of your home Wi-Fi. We're including this extra file. We'll come back to this in a minute, the fonts data, and this is how we're creating the fonts. So we're, we're moving away from the inbuilt fonts in the Parola library, and we've made our own. So this is needed just for Parola, was explained last time. This is if you want imperial clock. So if you want a 12 hour clock, you put I. If you want a metric clock, 24 hours, you put the M. So this is how we're setting up the um the equipment that we've got the matrices this is how we're connecting this is just some variables and um, this is to do with the auto dimming so i'm going to auto dim at eight o'clock at night make it bright again at seven o'clock in the morning my maximum brightness is going to be three and my minimum brightness is going to be zero we talked about this in the last video to put all your things that you want to change at the beginning of the code at the beginning of your code rather than baking it in further down the code so if you want to change it you have to scroll through all your code code to find it you will notice i've got no webcam today the webcam i had is broken i'm waiting for a replacement to come from amazon so you just have to put up with my voice voice and not see my uh, my boat race so um where are we now this is connecting to the wi-fi this i explained last time this is how we get on the time servers and let the software update the code for daylight saving hours etc these are for some very useful links again explained in the first video highly recommend you take your time to look at this it will tell you how the code is working so we're setting up here the instance of the parola well, I should move these further up. These are just some more variables to store hours, minutes and seconds and whether we're using metric or imperial um, uh, time. This is some char arrays so we can get the uh, information onto the matrix. So then we're setting up the Wi-Fi time zone, time server. Uh, this is for the metric or imperial display. Now we are beginning the instance of Pro. We need two in here because we've got two zones. Last time we only had one. Um, what else? I've set the intensity has slightly changed. It now says max brightness before I had a number in there. So I was hard baking in a value in the code, which I've told you earlier was a bad idea. Here we're setting up two zones. So for the hours, minutes and seconds, it's using display one and three and then for the seconds it's using uh zone zero so zone zero is the furthest on the right hand side and then the other two on the left hand side this is telling parola that we're going to use the font so in zone one we're going to use this font and in zone sorry in zone zero we're using that font and in zone one we're using that font so the difference between the fonts is one's four by seven and the other one's three by seven um and that will become clear when you see on the matrix. Um, so where are I? This is setting up the zones, the zone zero and zone one. This is what's going in there. So time and minute output and seconds output. And we talked about this in other videos here. Uh, this is part of updating the time. This is a bit of code to say if the hour is greater than the dim time or the hour is less than the bright time set the intensity to minimum so this is the auto dimming otherwise you're set the, the brightness to maximum brightness now i say it again if you're powering your matrices from a d1 mini or a, a other uh, chip 
keep the brightness low otherwise you'll end up burning the chip up so that's not a very good idea if you want to put in extra code you can put it in here because uh, obviously we're now in the loop section here so this is just going to keep looping around here we're displaying um the animations on the screens and then this is once it's finished we reset them and if there's a, another one that will display it so it just keeps looping around uh i did change this very slightly yeah i forgot to mention if you look out for here version 2 anything with version 2 so you can um control f on your keyboard and put ver2 and then you, it will highlight here like it's highlighting anything i put version 2 in so it's just telling you what i've changed in the code as long as i remember obviously to put ve2 there so i will try to do that uh, what did I change here? We got uh, here. So do do do. This was no. I didn't change anything here. Um, I did here because I wanted the hour format on its time. Here we are capturing the hours and minutes together, and here I just want the hour because then I can let the software dim the screen uh, subject to what hour it's on. And then here I'm changing the um, char of the output into a integer or a byte uh, is further up in the code. And then I can do the maths for that. And then this is just a standard Wi-Fi. So that's it. So not a lot's changed, but it does add functionality to the code. Now, what about the fonts I hear you cry? OK, not going to go in too much detail, but this is the file that does all the magic. And I will do another video to show you how I make these. And um, then you can make your own. And if you don't like how it's displaying, you can make the uh, numeric numbers more curvy. Um, whatever you like, really. But I, this, I called it, I called it three by seven straight. So it, it, everything's sort of pretty much square. All the horizontal lines are all lined up. Nothing's jumping around on the screen. And as I said to you before in the other video, where the number one was only taking up three columns, my number ones will take up four columns. So when a one changes to a two, the screen doesn't re-justify itself and either the time will jump one or two columns to the right or one or two columns to the left, depending on what numbers are showing on there. Okay, so we are only using these numbers so here are the numbers that are generating the or here is the code that's generating the numbers so this is telling us that it's three columns and then these are just numbers take it as red just just upload the code you'll see it working and that's how it's working um i did add in a b some um some of these because in later code we're going to add possibly am and pm indicators i don't think i need to add a p no, i didn't add a p down here so i need to add that in for you um but that'll be in later code and again do it in small um letters in case we haven't got enough room on the screen so you wouldn't be able to show the seconds if you have am and pm indicator then uh the other font is further down so the four by seven so it's just taking the extra width and um seven seven high now i can't remember why i made it seven and not eight i'd have to look through my notes and tell you why i did that why did i do that i think it was it was just easier to have seven because then the seconds would be justified against the larger numbers. If I made it eight, I think it's harder to justify. I really can't remember. I'm going to have to think about that one. Come back to you. So you can see here it's just got the extra column. So there's four columns here to, to make the bigger numbers. And that's it. So, yeah, just upload the code. And it will work. So there's not much debugging. So if I screen this up and go back to here and then upload the code, you'll see it compiling. My, my computer is quite quick. It's only a small code, so it doesn't take long. So 
So you see here it's connecting to SSID. And once it's connected at the moment, there's no other error messages now. That's uploaded on the code. So I'm going to have to insert a video now to show you it. When it first is booting up, you'll notice the screen goes dim. And I've purposely done that uh, in the code to make sure it doesn't go full brightness and burn up your chip because it's drawing too much current. When it gets onto the time server, then the, the screen will go brighter to the brightness that we've set in uh, here. Um, yeah, max bright, bright. So it'll go to value three. Uh, and that's it. So let me know how you get on. Let me know where the code works. Um, don't worry about the font file. I will come back to that and I will do a dedicated video showing you different ways to create font files. It's very easy once you've got the right piece of software to generate it for you. It's all free, open source, I believe it was. So that's it. That's Andy saying, enjoy your clock. Hope you enjoy the seconds and the auto dimming. Let me know how you get on. Add a comment to the bottom of the video if you want anything added to these projects. And as we develop this code together, um, we can add that in and see where this leads us. So that's Andy now wishing you a good afternoon and happy coding as ever.